It's been long awaited, a major shakeup in Nigeria's cabinet. President Bola Tinubu has announced sweeping changes to his cabinet. Several ministers have been reassigned, some dismissed, and new faces nominated to join the cabinet. State House correspondent Ade Suwao Moran tells us more. The Federal Executive Council reconvened after a month's high chess and a two weeks vacation by President Bola Tinubu. After months of speculation, the president finally announces a sweeping cabinet reshuffle aimed at boosting government efficiency. The shakeup includes a major restructuring, reassignment of ministers, dismissals, as well as appointments. The president has approved the immediate implementation of eight far-reaching actions to reinvigorate capacity for optimal efficiency, portion of his commitment to deliver on his promises to Nigerians. The eight actions approved by the President include, one, as the Minister of Information has already told us, the renaming of the Ministry of Niger Data Development, Development to Ministry of Regional Development to oversee the activities of all the Regional Development Commissions. The Regional Development Commissions to be under the supervision of the new Ministry are the Niger Data Development Commission, the Southeast Development Commission, the North East Development Commission, at the North West Development Commission. The Ministry of Sports Development has been dissolved, with its responsibility now transferred to the National Sports Commission, which will be chaired by Shehu Diko. While Sunday Dari, former Minister of Sports in the Muhammad Buhari administration, is appointed as the Special Advisor to the President on Public Communication and Orientation. Additionally, the Ministry of Tourism has been merged with the Ministry of Arts and Culture creating the Ministry of Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Creative Economy, now led by Hanatu Musawa. Tinubu wielded the big stick, dismissing five ministers as part of the sweeping cabinet reshuffle. These are the following ministers who have been charged, and as you know, the president met them this afternoon to thank them for their services for the nation. They are as follows. Barista Uju Ken Oaneye, Minister of Women Affairs, Lola Adijon, Minister of Tourism. Professor Tahir Mama, Minister of Education. Abdullahi Muhammad Guazo, Minister of State Housing and Urban Development. Dr. Jamila Bio Ibrahim, Minister of Youth Development. So only five ministers were discharged. Ten ministers have been reassigned to new portfolios. Dr. Yusuf Sununu, Previously Minister of State for Education, is now Minister of State for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Reduction. Tunji Alausa, formerly Minister of State for Health, has been elevated to the role of Minister of Education. Belo Goronyo, who was the Minister of State for Water Resources and Sanitation, is now the Minister of State for Works. Abuba Kamomo, who once led the Niger Delta Ministry, now oversees the newly created Ministry of Regional Development. Uba Amadu, who served as Minister of State for Steel Development, has been reassigned as Minister of State for Regional Development. Doris Uzoka Anete has transitioned from the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to become Minister of State for Finance. Senator John Enor, previously in charge of sports development, is now the Minister of State for Trade and Investment following the dissolution of his former ministry. Iman Suleiman Ibrahim moves from Minister of State for Police Affairs to Minister of Women Affairs. Ayodele Olawande, previously Minister of State for Youth Development, is now the Minister of Youth Development. And Dr. Salako Adeboye, formerly Minister of State for Environment, takes on the role of In addition to these changes, President Tinubu has nominated seven new ministers pending Senate approval. The nominees include... Dr. Netawe Yiwatda as Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Reduction, Bianca Odinaka Odumegu Ojuku as Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Muhammadu Meyari Dinyaji, who previously served as Minister of Police Affairs under former President Muhammad Buhari, has been nominated to replace Simon Lalong as Minister of Employment. Lalong had left the administration to focus on his position in the 10th Senate. Others are Jumo Keoduole as Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Idimukta Maha as a Minister of a newly established ministry. Suwaiba Ahmed has been nominated as Minister of State for Education.
while Yusuf Atta is nominated as Minister of State for Housing and Urban Development. The president had set up a central delivery coordination unit led by Hadiza Bala Husman to measure the performance of his minister. Since then, only Beta Edu, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, had been suspended after an alleged financial misappropriation until now, as she has been officially replaced in this cabinet overhaul. This shake-up comes after months of anticipation and follows President Tinubu's earlier warning to members of his cabinet about underperformance months ago during a retreat. No doubt this reshuffle raises expectations on performance as the administration faces pressure to deliver on its promises and address Nigeria's pressing challenges. From the presidential villa, Omoruan, Arise News. The special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Odonduga, spoke about the cabinet revamp on prime time with Charles Anyagolu. We didn't use the word sack. The president used the word discharge. Yeah, but they were, <laughs> let's face it, they were, they were let go. Yeah, they were let go, they were relieved of their duties. Right. And some other people were. But see, the, the way the president dealt with it, uh, after the council meeting today, mm -hmm. he had a meeting, he called them for a meeting, and I think he thanked them for the services they rendered in the last one year or so. And, uh, I think we don't know the pattern. It didn't just, you know, not like the military days when you are sacked on radio, he called them. He tried to uh, socialize with them, fit another day, and say, thank them, thank you for what they've done, and explain to them why they just had to go. Okay, well, that's actually a, that's a very interesting point. And that's a fairly polite way to say goodbye, because I was going to ask you whether or not, because, I mean, we saw them at yeah. that, that you know, Federal Executive Council yeah. meeting today, whether or not he made the announcement at the Federal Executive Council no, it didn't, meeting. It didn't right, make okay. It, it didn't make that. What he, the only hint he gave was that at the end of the meeting, he, he named some five persons and asked them to see him right. after the meeting. But that must have been a warning sign, wasn't it? Well, you know, unless you are very perceptive, you don't really right. know what was a miss. So yeah, I think he was polite in the right. way he dealt with it. I said he didn't do it the military way unless he called them and told them, this is why I'm asking right. to go. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be said then that those who were effectively sacked, even though you don't like that word, were not meeting the president's expectations. Uh, well, I mean, well, not the, just the president's expectation. Is the expectation of the public. Yeah, but obviously you know, the president some, has some, the power Some to weeks fire. ago, at the cabinet meeting, mm. the president actually told the ministers to go out there, tell Nigerians what you are doing, what you have been doing for the past one year or so. Because according to the president, said, the perception outside there by the people is that the people feel that the government is not performing. Mm. And the president said, look, the president believes that the government is performing, but the ministers are not going out to really project government the appropriate way. So he told them, go out there, tell people what they are doing. Uh, I said, whatever happened to what, what happened today was based on some empiricism. It uh, was not just something done uh, by fancy or anything, but mm. some, there was a, some basic facts that the president used, some criteria that, was, that were used to ask some people to go. Right. So are these new appointments and reassignments expected to alter policy significantly? Uh, don't forget we have a program, uh, the Renewed Hope Agenda, mm. uh, which the president keeps stressing. Well, that's a slogan. As, it's not a slogan. It's a program. Mm. We have a manifesto, and the manifesto touches every aspect of our country, uh, including some of those decisions that People have criticized the government for the removal of subsidy, mm. uh, the mm. amortization of the same rate. They are all contained in this program. And every facet of it, each ministry knows they have to do, he has to do something to execute uh, the, uh, the ideas, the program already lined up in that, in that uh, Renew Up uh, manifesto. So that is the duty. Anybody, any, any of the ministers know what you have to do, just go and read. The Renewable Agenda Manifesto, and as a code program there. 
Mm. But are you actually, I mean, I'm keen to know what difference this cabinet reshuffle is going to make, because presumably it represents the president's desire to move the country forward. But the question is how, because you're saying that they're going to go back and read the manifesto. Um, I mean, are, are these people who are appropriate to the appointments in terms of their background experience? Now, let me, look, let me give an example. Mm. Uh, Bianca. Some people say, oh, Bianca, Odumu Gojuku's uh, uh, widow of Ojuku mm. and so on. But Bianca has some diplomatic experience. Yes, she does, actually. She's been ambassador, An ambassador of yeah. Spain. And so, by asking her to be Minister of State for Foreign yeah. Affairs shows you the president's intention. Uh, even though people may say that it's political or something, but well, there's see, an element of politics there, isn't there? The lady has some experience, so mm. she will have some value in that Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Indeed. Uh, so uh, if you look at the man, the Dr. Alausa, who has been taken from Ministry of Health to Ministry of Education, mm. he is a US based doctor. I think he's a very versatile man and He's done well in the Ministry of Health. The President wants to challenge him to go and do even much better in the Ministry of Education. So there are a lot of people like that. Like the man who has been appointed Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, the engineer from Plato State. Mm. You know, for a long time, Plato, after Simon Lalong, uh, returned to, went to the Senate to become a senator. The Fido did not have anybody in the cabinet. So the President collected there today by bringing the governorship candidate of, PD, of APC to take Plato's place. And he's a very qualified guy. He's, he's an engineer. I think he read electronic engineering or something like that. And mm. So he's, he's been asked to go to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. And I believe that he's going to do... Right. Very well. All right, a number of things to talk about. Um, Rufai, your take on this story. Okay. Couple of things. Uh, finally, we've been calling for ministerial reshuffling. We finally have it. But I still feel there were many ministers that were not working that President Tinubu didn't discharge. So I'm not content with this ministerial reshuffling. There are many ministers and their ministry had not worked. I have some off the top of my head. There are many ministers that said a lot of things that were contrarian to what was reality. Example, the power sector. Well, the minister was saying that about 40% of Nigerians have access to, to about over 20 hours of power every day. When National Bureau of Statistics recently released that it's only 58% of Nigerians that are on the grid. And we've seen the problem in the power sector. Grid collapses and grid failures here and there. I can go on and on and on about this ministry, but some have been pulled out. Ray of hope in this new minister has brought in. And besides, the cabinet is still heavily bloated. It's still a very big cabinet. And some ministries I have quibble with, creating the Ministry of Livestock, where you have Ministry of Agriculture, a lot has to be done about the cabinet. Jumoke Oduwali is a good one. He led Pepec for a while now. And we'd like to see her bring that innovation she's brought in the ease of doing business to trade and investment. If she does well, we'll celebrate her. If she doesn't do well, definitely we will look at her critically and tell truth to power. Also, the case of the humanitarian ministry is another one. Finally, the case of Beta had been laid to rest. Because only yesterday we saw a lot of stories here and there that Beta were probably brought back. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs must remember that that ministry is to reduce poverty. We must not hear any appropriation shit again. I hear my time is up. I would have loved to speak more on this. I yield the floor. Well, I cannot comment on this subject in one minute. You know, maybe as you just keep quiet. Because it's a subject that I would like to talk about. Since we have a guest, maybe when the guest comes, the guest. Okay. Because if I'm reduced to one minute, it's a problem. However, it's as follows. This was, uh, you know, a change of cabinet, a reshuffle of cabinet, a rejigging of cabinet that was announced one month ago. At that time when they made the announcement, I said it was not necessary. 
Now, one month later, what has happened? Looks like an anticlimax. It looks like it's cosmetic. It's not the kind of uh, reshuffling that uh, you know the Nigerian people are expecting. So it comes as a kind of disappointment. However, the people who have said that they are disappointed should be reminded that the president of Nigeria hires and fires as he wishes. It is his government. He chooses his own team. And it is prerogative for him to choose who he wants to work with. Now we're told that this is based on an assessment of the performance of the, uh, you know, the ministers before now, uh, 45 of them, uh, you know, the uh, uh, content delivery, service delivery team led by uh, Adiza Bala Usman. Okay, is this a reflection of that assessment? Many Nigerians say no, they have their own different assessment. And they think that more ministers should have been turned adrift. Number four is that the statement you know, talking about these eight issues that the president says he's introducing, he's addressing to increase efficiency, that statement was not signed. It's, it's called the presidency. In fact, that statement is also not dated. Who is that so-called the presidency? Who is a human agent that is the presidency? I think one of the things that uh, President Tinubu should do going forward is to name a specific spokesperson formally so that statements from the presidency will be duly signed. If it was not signed by a spokesperson, it could have been signed by the secretary to the government of the federation, who is the coordinator. Now to the eight points. Now he says that the Ministry of uh, Niger Data will now be Ministry of Regional Development. Okay, to accommodate other areas. Well, some people will say, how about the North Central? Is there a North Central Development Agency? No. Is it Hyperdec that will represent them under that? The minister, Momo, has tried to disabuse people's minds. OK, maybe people will be satisfied with that explanation. Number two, he says he has appointed uh, Sunday Dari as a special advisor, uh, public information and orientation. In the Ministry of Information, he's not in the presidency, he's with the Minister of Information. What kind of responsibilities will he be given? He could just have been named Minister of State for Information. And that will have been that. Shehu Diku has now been named uh, Director General of the National uh, Sports Commission, and the Ministry of Sports has been scra scrapped. There are many Nigerians who are saying, well, Shehu Diku is a very experienced man, former second vice president of the uh, NFF, uh, a board member of uh, CAV, a uh, committee member of FIFA. Yes, he comes with very strong credentials, but what is the reason for you know, scrapping that ministry. They have not told us. Now, we're also told that uh, 10 ministers have been reassigned to new portfolios. Nigerians are saying some other ministers should be, even be re re reassigned or they should be asked to leave. Five ministers have been discharged. Top of the list, uh, Uju Kennedy on Haneye, the most controversial minister in that uh, cabinet uh, before now. Well, the reasons may be obvious. People will say, well, she did this, she did that in Niger State, uh, the University of Calabar incident, and all of that. Very controversial. But she herself should be very grateful that uh, President Tinubu uh, you know, recognized her as the only female who aspired to be president on the platform of the uh, APC. Uh, then Lola Adejon, tourism, well, she was sleeping most of the time. In other words, I mean, she didn't make any impact. But joining tourism to culture and uh, creative uh, economy, I don't think is a very good idea because tourism is so important that it should stand on its own. Even if the person there was not uh, vibrant enough, you know, that should be no reason uh, to merge it. Tai Maman, Minister of Education, what is his offense? Because I really can't find the, his offense other than the controversy over age limit for university admissions. Are there other reasons why he was turned adrift? And if he must be replaced, should he be replaced with a medical doctor? I'm not saying Dr. Alausa is not competent, but a medical doctor to manage, to take over from a man who was vice chancellor of this university, who was director general of the Nigerian law school, it doesn't seem to make uh, uh, sense to me. Now, the other people that were turned adrift, uh, Jamila Biu, Ibrahim, and the uh, Minister of State uh, Housing and Development, whatever, uh, those two, they came the same way they, they left the same way they came, quietly, you know, because I don't think they made any impact. 
But in the new appointments, I think some of them look really good. Dikin Yadi, you know, uh, who is now in humanitarian affairs, has a very good CV, PhD engineering and all of that. We hope that we will be able to translate that into performance. Jumoke Uduwole, of course, has been in Pebek. You know, she's everywhere, LLM and all that. Excellent pedigree from Ogun State, you know. And uh, she's, uh, you know, a round peg in a, in a round hole. I wish the same could be said uh, for the others. The woman in the uh, Ministry of Women Affairs, yeah, on paper, you know, the new person uh, seems to have a very good uh, uh, CV. Uh, you know, and I hope that she will be able to live up uh, to that in terms of expectation. But it's not an ass shaking, all that drama, one more drama, we will reshuffle cabinet was not necessary. But President Tinubu has other things to do, as I pointed out previously. Like, for example, where are our ambassadors? They have not appointed ambassadors. Okay, Mrs. Ojuku has been made the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Andrew Zekowas, AU, all these uh, African issues. Why the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs deals with the bigger issues of the Commonwealth United Nations. Well, she's been a special assistant, uh, senior special assistant on uh, Diaspora Affairs. She's been a High Commissioner to Ghana. She's been Ambassador to Spain. She has a Master's in International Law, uh, International Relations and Diplomacy. So on paper also, she seems to be eminently qualified for the job. But on the whole, it's not something that anybody should dance and sing about. I think that President uh, Tinubu could have done better. But as I said, it is his cabinet and it is his prerogative to choose his own team. All right. Um, in t let me start with the newly appointed ministers and congratulations to them. Um, pending Senate mm -hmm. confirmation, which possibly would go through, uh, except some you know, things that would come up. I, I doubt that very strongly. But I want to say that when you compare this set of app appointment to the previous one, it feels or it seems like for this set of appointments, the people who were appointed are eminently qualified. They are qualified. If you look at the list of people, starting off with Dr. Jumoke Oduole, unlike what we saw in the last set of appointments when we had the main appointment, where we talked about some of those um, positions being filled by political, just to pay, you know, political friends and th people who didn't have know what they were doing or had any qualification or bona fide to be in that position. The new set of ministers seem aptly qualified. Dr. Jumoke Oduwale has been, um, well, started off as SSA to the president on ease of doing business, was promoted to the SA on ease of doing business. And under her tenure, we saw Nigeria's, um, Nigeria move up on the ease of doing, world ease of doing index um, a few steps higher. And so she was able to prove her mettle in that position. I'm looking forward to what she will do. I felt like her, um, be, her, her position didn't give her enough powers to be able to implement some of the changes that we need to see to make Nigeria, you know, the investment climate for Nigeria enabling attractive enough for people to come. A number of reforms she did with some multiple stakeholders. So I'm looking forward to her building up on the work that she's done in the past to consolidate on that and really, um, you know, make that ministry, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment really vibrant. Also looking at how, you know, investor confidence in Nigeria, some of the bottlenecks that have been experienced by potential investors to the country. I know we talked about um, visas on arrival. We've talked about multiple, um, taxation and a lot of other things like that. Um, it would be great to see her do that. Unfortunately, I was saying yesterday on my ex that Madam Uju Kennedy, uh, Dr. Uju Kennedy Ohaneye is no longer the Minister, Minister of Women Affairs. Say what you will. She's one of the ministers who showed passion and was consistently in the news, whether for good or bad. But at least she was able to demonstrate that she was quite passionate in that role. So it would be great to see what Iman Suleiman Ibrahim would do. I said as well that Dr. Jamila Ibio Ibrahim, I had such high hopes for her. Young, female, heading the Ministry of Youth Affairs, catering to 60% of Nigeria's population, we expected a lot more. Unfortunately, it seemed as if the post or the position was overwhelming for her. And so she was just there trying to understand the terrain and didn't quite get her foot in until she was discharged by the president. Now we have um, Ayodele Olawande, who was, um, prior to this, the Minister of State for Youth, um, youth Affairs. Let's hope that he would do you know, something, work with us. So there's so many potentials. We talk about the young people, our talents in Nigeria being our greatest potential. So many ways to tap into that and to really engage our young people. Over 60% of the population. So very, very high stakes for him. And I'm hoping that he'll be able to deliver because the youth deserve, um, deserve that. I was going to say three women out in terms of being discharged, three women in. So still balanced in terms of the numbers. The president hasn't still yet been able to fulfill his 35% 
um, gender equity or gender balance in his appointments, especially with regards to the ministers. So still looking to see that in his appointments. It's not yet reflected. But um, also, finally, I'll talk about the Ministry of Tourism, Art, Culture and Creative Economy. I do agree that that's such a big um, ministry. And the concern or the fear there is that one will suffer for the other. Minister Hanatu uh, Musawa has done quite well, you know, appeared or shown her in the right places. But I also feel that there's a lot of potential there. I love how she's been able to get into the creative sector, film, music. But we can use those vehicles as an opportunity to promote tourism to Nigeria. We've seen how that's happened in other places. United Arab, Arab Emirates does it. South Africa does it. Where their movies are deliberately um, sponsored to showcase the beauty of the country so that it attracts people to want to come. And this is how she can possibly merge that department, you know, her ministry to ensure she's able to optimize it. So a lot of things can be done. I feel like, yes, we can say, oh, yes, the security issues and all that. But Lebanon and other, some of the places that we really enjoy going to are not yet settled, you know, security wise. But people still go there to visit. So I believe that there's a way she can, um, the messaging, using film, using art, using entertainment to really position Nigeria as a destination of choice for a lot of people to come and do business and to come for tourism. But, um, I mean, so many things to talk about there, and I know we have a guest who's going to be speaking to us very shortly.